Hello, on today's command tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to destroy and disable airfields in Command Modern Operations. So uh, airfields, obviously, it's you know kind of in the name. If you look at the old command, you probably noticed that it was Command Modern Air Naval Operations, air being one of the major components of this game. Now, of course, we know that we have basically two different kinds of air. We have kind of the sea base, which would be your carriers and helicarriers and things like that. And then you have your land base, which are going to be your typical airfields, heliports, FARPs, things along those lines. So one of the big things you're always going to be dealing with, especially in uh, modern offensive scenarios, is coming up with ways to prevent the enemy from employing their aircraft. You know, one of the common tenets of modern history, I should say, tactics, is the full spectrum approach. Not only do you need to deny the enemy assets by preventing them from going into the air, but you must deny them the ability to supply for the air, you must deny them the uh, need to go to the air, and things like that, in order to completely crippled an enemy's ability to employ aircraft. So enough of that. So basically, we're going to go in to take a look at how things are simulated at this time. I want to say this really quickly, though. We're dealing with build 115.8.1. This can change as time goes on. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the structure of an airport real fast so we kind of know what we're going up against. So basically, an airport is made up of a major runway. Sometimes it is a taxiway, has some access points, and then it has some type of aircraft storage. Some types of aircraft storage, such as a tarmac space or open parking, or even revetments, basically can be seen down into, so you can identify if there's aircrafts at them, as well as the type of aircraft, assuming your reconnaissance is good. Other structures at a typical airfield, a lot of times you'll have these little control towers. I always thought this was kind of interesting because in the real world, killing the control tower is usually a pretty good way to disrupt operations, but in command, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I always like kind of save this target for last kind of a thing because it's like i don't know it's a, it just makes you feel good by blowing it up it doesn't really do anything to the airport in this build the other elements that we need to watch out for at a typical airport are the ammo dumps as well as the fuel dumps now like i said for the third time now in this version of command fuel dumps don't matter so if you were to blow up every one of these fuel dumps they would still be able to refuel and use aircraft for the remainder of the game this is kind of a bummer because in the real world look at how close these things are together they're like 100 meters apart yes 80 meters apart it would only take a couple of gbus 10s or maybe even a couple of mark 84s down the middle or even cbus to cripple their entire airport just by killing the fuel supply and then again we have the ammo bunkers this is modeled correctly what I mean by that is, if you have not lim unlimited ammunition on, limited ammo, I should say, anything inside those bunkers is vulnerable. So if I pick up one of these bunkers, I believe this is the one I actually set up. Let me take a look real quick. Nah, it would have been too easy if I remembered which one I actually used here. But basically, a map designer who's using non-unlimited ammunition will actually set up a magazine at an airport with the weapons they intend the people to be using. If this has been set up and this bunker gets destroyed, that would mean that this airport can no longer rearm and and re actually, it could still refuel, but it could no longer rearm with the weapons listed here. Of course, if there's any aircraft already here that have those weapons on board, that's not an issue. However, if we kill this thing, as well as all the ammo in it, they can't do that again. So how do we go about crippling an airport? Well, it always comes down to the weakest link. So in this particular situation, this particular airport has a really, 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 really long runway. And you're looking at it going, okay, so that's uh, 3,200 meters. That's pretty honking. Take a look here. Its damage points is 1,200. So you're like, that's not bad. You know, 4G uh, Mark 84 is no problem with heavy armor. That means the only way you can damage this surface is with penetrators or something that's got some serious, serious, serious capability. Now, when usually when people think, how do I kill a runway? They think about things like, actually, we don't, well, not a fab. We'll do a Durandal. This weapon was designed specifically for the purpose of it and is a penetrator. The problem is, is you need a whole lot of these in order to do any damage. Of course, the um, Soviets also, I should say the Russians, also have this capability with their uh, BET 500 SP, which again, it does a lot of damage, but at the end of the day, you need a lot of these to actually destroy a runway. So killing the runway is usually not the easiest way to disable the airport. By the way, if you do kill the runway, we have a taxiway down here, which is still usable as a runway. If you actually click on it, you'll notice it's also 1,200 hit points. However, its armor is less, but that's still going to require a significant amount of ordnance to just completely destroy. In command with this version, if you do destroy a runway, it's not actually, quote, destroyed unless you drop a nuclear weapon on it. That means that over time, it will actually repair itself depending on how much damage you did to it. Keep in mind, the repair time is like 
24 hours. It's not 20 minutes. So if you want to keep a runway out of commission, you basically have to constantly reattack it, a la you know, the Serbian campaigns of the 1990s. So that leaves us with, how else are we going to cripple this thing? Well, there is a weakest link. If we can't kill these stupid ammo bunkers, by the way, ammo bunkers, check this out. Look at the armor on this thing. That is going to take a stupid amount of ordnance to destroy. Not to mention, look at its damage points. You're never going to be able to kill this thing unless you have 50 GBUs. It's not not 50, it's like 12. But still, you're going to have to do that. Which brings us to our weakest link, and everybody loves this, the access point. Check this out. Access points, 1,000 hit points. That's three, GB, uh, three Mark 84s. No armor. Ha <laughs> ha, we found the weakness. So the way we could do this now is we could simply blow up each one of these four access points. Now, access points are a little weird. You're looking at this airport going, well, there's a taxiway right here. If I was leaving here, I could just go and fly. Yeah, but the way command simulates it is in the sense that to get to either the runway or the taxiway requires an access point. So really, these access points are simulating like this little connector here, or this teeny tiny little connector here. So if you can cripple all four of these, this airport is out of commission for about a day. So of course, you're sitting there going, oh, that sounds pretty effective. That's not bad. I mean, you only need to hit four targets individually. There are some complications, and we'll see that when we uh, go try this out in a minute. Finally, and this is uh, my favorite solution, is just blow up the airplanes. You notice that there's this tight pack of very, very large aircraft, all nice and exposed in this tarmac space. If you use CBUs, cluster bomb units, you could literally just come through and go blah, 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 and clean out the entire enemy air force in one shot. Now, keep in mind over here, we have some hangars. Hangars are tricky because you can't actually see what's inside of them, which is kind of a bummer. But at the same token as a hangar is not actually that tough of an object. They'll have these uh, protected shells and things like that. Uh, let's see, underground, obviously kind of underground aircraft shelters. Look at this. Special armor, 1,600 damage points. You can have all sorts of shelters and uh, protected hangars and stuff like that. Let me see if they have the big scary one. Now I'll get that a little later. But these are actually not hard to kill. Don't use a CPU against them, mind you. You want something a little bit more precise. They're also pretty close to each other, so a lot of times you get one, you get them all. Remember, you can't know what's inside of one of these hangars when you're doing reconnaissance unless you see somebody leaving the hangars. Speaking of which, I want to show you something really, really cool real fast. If I take an airport and I go ahead, and let's go ahead and get a couple planes here. I'll go ahead and uh, grab us. These guys, I'm, of course, cheating a little bit here just to speed things up. I'm going to order them to launch as a group. Hey. This is really cool. When an aircraft is told to leave, they will actually come out of their hangars, then occupy the access points, and then occupy the runway itself before takeoff. Once they've gotten onto the runway, like they'll suddenly see this disappear, and suddenly these guys will disappear, and the aircraft will come ripping out of the top. Just like that. Did you see it? That means that aircraft actually physically move around this base, or at least they simulate something along those lines, which means if you're spying, you can actually see them moving across this and actually be able to identify them using that technique. It's just kind of a neat little twist there that you know, it's kind of worth checking out. So anyway, enough of the general stuff. Let's blow this thing up. I'm going to go ahead and rearm our scenario here just in case. And let's see how we're going to do this. So basically what I've done is I've gotten us some Chinese assets, some European assets, and some Soviet Russian assets. I'm ignoring the American assets this time because you're probably pretty familiar with them at this point. So we need to decide what exactly we want to do to this airport. Do we want to prevent them from using it as an airport? Do we want to prevent them from rearming? Do we want to destroy the aircraft that are on it? Do we want to embarrass them? Do we want to do a precision strike? Do we want to do a long range strike? Those are all tactical considerations you're going to have to make before we do it. I'm kind of a fan of sort of like the general do as much damage as possible, kind of a degrading strike at the same time as disabling those access points. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy and I like to use missions. Let's go ahead and zoom in on our little targets of opportunity here. You can tap the asterisk key a couple times to actually see who everybody is. The first thing I want to go after in this thing is going to be those access points. Remember, these access points only have a 1,000 damage points with no armor. They're like free targets. Yes, you can't completely destroy them unless you use the Belugan method, but you're still able to put this airport out of commission for a long time. However, if you don't get all four of these, nothing, it's not going to have been worth it. You'll just degrade operations. It'll slow them down a little bit. So how do you do this? Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a strike mission. When you're working with conventional forces, that is, you know, unguided bombs, do not take all four of these targets and put them into one mission. You're sitting there going, why? Well, what's going to happen is they're going to come running in, 
They're going to jump a bunch of bombs. They're going to go around going, we didn't kill it. Reattack. Reattack. Oh, we're out of bombs. Let's go home. Meaning only one of the access points is actually going to be properly damaged, leaving the others alone. This is also the equivalent, by the way, of selecting the whole airport and hit add all units. If you do that, you're only going to attack the units that are closest to the airport from your launching. So that's useless. So you have to separate when using conventional weapons. Let me clarify access points into individual missions. Sometimes you can get away with doing two, but at the end of the day, you're just going to screw yourself. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have as far as assets that we could deploy for this purpose. So Chinese assets, again, I'm just being sort of generic here to give you guys an idea. We have flounders, which are, if I recall correctly, that's a really big plane. Kind of reminds me of a tornado, to be honest. Uh, scoot down, scoot, scoot. What do we have as far as special equipment? Anything fancy? Bummer. Okay, so it's going to take a lot of those guys to do it. Uh, HC5s are actually reconnaissance. We're going to deploy them in a minute. We have badgers. Let's see here. Badgers. Eh. Sista tuple of 16. Take a look. What do we got for a calculator? Ballistic computing. Yuck. So you're going to need to drop a lot of bombs from these. Uh, what do we got? We've got the uh, J8D, the finback. That's nice. I like that. Let's scoot down to the bottom. What do we have as far as oh, ballistic computing again? Ah, yuck. We have the HYD, I believe these are refueling, and of course we have maritime surveillance. So how many bombers are we gonna need? Ah, so it's got a thousand hit points, it has no armor, and it's a big target. So that tells me that you're gonna probably be able to get away with maybe four aircraft, fairly low altitude, lots of ordnance. If we actually take a look at the ordnance, the 500 kg, that's a pretty big bomb. What do we got for damage? 220. So 1,000 divided by 220 is going to take five direct hits. Five, how many do we get? We get four, so that's going to be about 20 bombs worth. If a quarter of them, yeah, that works well. So we use four aircraft for that purpose. And, of course, we'll go ahead and stick to the JH-7. Now, one thing that I'm doing that you're probably going, wait a minute, shouldn't you have done that first? You're absolutely correct. We need to make sure we're actually attacking something worthwhile. Now, the way we usually do this is we get a reconnaissance aircraft. We take a look at the airport, determine who's where, and then play plan things. However, the neat thing about this particular airport that we selected is that all of the tarmac spaces are concentrated in one area, which means collateral damage. We almost don't need to know if there's any aircraft here. Of course, if we get there and find that there's no aircraft, you're wasting munitions. So to simulate that real quick, I'm going to go ahead and get myself a quick little reconnaissance plane. Uh, we'll use a, again, okay, we'll cheat a little bit. We'll use an RBT for this. RBT. Again, we're just cheating a little bit, but I want to show you kind of what this is, and I'm not going to make you go through the whole process of kind of sitting around. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> All right, go ahead and get that down. You're going to have to get a little bit lower altitude. I need you to identify individual aircraft at this airport. Keep in mind, we would have done this with a mission a long time ago. Did you identify anybody? No. Oh, he hasn't got down to altitude yet. Keep in mind today, we do have a little bit of clouds, so that makes things a little bit trickier. All right, we're going to scoot, scoot. Come on, identify. Remind me to ask this guy why he can't see out the side of his cockpit, because it's a MiG-25. Send him even lower. Come on. As soon as he gets there, then he's going to go down a thousand feet. Come on. Get back here. Spot the eye. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Now that we did things correctly, we actually have a fairly good idea of, hey, look at that. Sure enough, we are able to identify all the parking spots being occupied, probably by something like a C-130. That's probably a big open space. Indeed, a very large aircraft, well, medium, so it could be an F-111 or something like that. All right, back to what I was doing originally, back to the mission. Okay, let's reactivate that mission, and let's go ahead and get ourselves some aircraft. I believe we're going to go with J-8s, because it really is not going to make that much of a difference here. So like I said, we're going to go with four bombers. Uh, let's go find J-8, J-8, ah, there we go. One, two, three, four. Keep in mind, we're ignoring the fact that opponents usually shoot back when you attempt this. So I'm going to neglect that for now, but that could be part of another thing. Do we need to use uh, radar? We probably don't because the clouds are kind of high, and these guys are, have a very, very low altitude. How do I know that? If you actually take a look, it tells you they're going to be attacking at 200 feet above ground level, which, again, if they were AAA, this would be a disaster. One more thing I want to take a look at, and that's the weapon release authorization. They're going to be dropping all of their bombs, which is exactly what I want them to do. Okay, so that's all set. Let's go ahead and take care of the other access points. Keep in mind, if you miss a single one of these access points, this airport will still work. So we grab the one at the top left. Actually, I don't trust myself there. Let me make sure I did. I'm going to start at the bottom left. There we go. All set. So let's go ahead and set this one up as well. 
I'll just call it AP2 this time. Strike. Don't accidentally click uh, error intercept, by the way. I've done that a million times in this program. You have no idea. Let's go ahead and grab the next four. Again, remember, I don't need to change anything here because this is actually pretty well set up. We're going to ignore that taxiway. We're going to ignore the runway. Like I told you, it takes a lot of effort to do that. We're going to go ahead and target the next access point. AP3. Land strike. Okie doke. Let's go ahead and get our next... Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Where are they? Yeah, there they are. One, two, three, four. Add. Uh, this is good. This is good. This is good. All set. All set. All set. Sweet. Let's go ahead and get the last one as well. Keep in mind, you miss one. This was a waste of effort. Strike AP4. Okay. Land strike. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab our last. Oh, we don't need those. We'll go ahead and grab our last of these. Toss them in. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. So that will cripple that airport, assuming the mission is accomplished. Now, one thing I highly recommend doing is grabbing these two guys and creating a support mission not too far from the attack area in the event that we do not succeed. As everybody knows in baseball as well as in cricket, entire games are won and lost on a bad catch. So if we miss it and are unable to cripple that thing, it's game. We've wasted our time. And keep in mind, you might not get a reattack depending on what happens in this uh, case of the scenario. So in the event that that happens, I'm actually going to create a quick little support mission that allows these two aircraft to hang out for reattacking purposes. Think of it as a reserve. Set this as support. Press OK. Obviously, you want them to be cruising around at high altitude. I'm going to set this to two aircraft, because remember, we only have two left, and toss them in there. OK. We can't forget those guys, because uh, knowing me, I will forget them later on. So they're going to fly here and sort of kind of hang out. So after the attack is done, I can have them jump in in the event that one of the access points survived my onslaught, which if you do math, you realize there's probably about a 15 to 20% chance of. Okay, so that takes care of disabling the airport's runways. So now you can't take off, now you can't land safely at this airport. Well, you could land, but you'd just be hanging out on the runway for a while, not going very far. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next aspect, and that's destroying the aircraft. Keep in mind, you don't have to cripple the airport if you've already destroyed the aircraft. My favorite tool for destroying aircraft, of course, is going to be cluster bombs. They are amazing. And especially when you get some of the later ones, like those joint standoff weapons that have the cluster warheads, it's like cheating. But unfortunately, we do not have those assets. We just have basically five Fab 500s, which we're going to have to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these units here. Let's go ahead and uh, destroy, this is for the taxiway. Remember, we've identified these guys as already carrying aircraft, so we're not wasting ammunition here. We do a land strike, press OK. Oh, actually, that's not what that is at all. Tarmac, that's what I meant to say. So who do we use for this? Hmm, hmm. What's going to be the best thing that we don't care about accuracy, but we want to have as much splash dam? Aha, I think I know what to use here. Let's go grab our badgers. Now, the badgers themselves carry Fab 1000s. These usually lend themselves better to strikes against things like the ammo bunkers, which you're noticing I'm ignoring because I know I won't be able to kill them if I threw every airplane I had in the Chinese assets airport. You just won't be able to hit or do enough damage to completely destroy them. And again, if you miss one, that's more sidewinders to get launched at you later on. The other thing is, why don't I use those aircraft to attack the hangars? That's a great question as well. And as a matter of fact, I'm actually going to add these other two parking spaces over here too, just in case we get the opportunity to re-attack. Whoop, can't do that in this game. Uh, let's go ahead and move that down. Ah, What did I just say? Go down. Maybe if I add this one up. Hey, there we go. Ah, whatever. I'm not going to mess with it. It's going to be fine. Just actually, no, this is not going to work. I should be more careful. So there's one thing I'm going to do differently. You'll notice I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 targets, and I have 12 bombers. I'm going to go to weapon release authorization. I'm going to go to weapon release authorization again, and I'm going to open up the release options here. Now, here's something that's going to go wrong. These aircraft are all going to show up in a really big posse, and they're going to drop a 1,000 bombs basically on these two targets. To stop them from doing that, you have to tell them to only do one unit attacking per target. If you skip this step, you'll find, like I said, that all the things up here got killed, but nothing below will have been killed. So kind of keep that in the back of your head. We do want them to drop all their bombs. Remember, they're using ballistic computers. They're not terribly accurate. And of course, we have a hardened target, and we we'll set that to one. This is going to get really tricky with GPUs later on, as you'll see, but that's okay. All right. So last but not least, uh, how many do we want to attack at a time? Six. I don't want to do this piecemeal. I want them to show up and they're going to go Bleh, all over the target. Because remember, each bomber is going to be attacking their own tarmac space. That's going to work great. 
Let me go ahead and see if I can lower this now. No, it just does not want to do that. That is such a bummer. Oh, well, it'll be fine. We'll show up with something else to uh, destroy those guys a little later on. Remember, I have my reattack guys, which leaves me with, let's see what else I have left here. I have the JH7s, which are pretty good. And I think that's about it. So what do I do with the JH7s? Now it's time to go after the hangers. So we have no idea. Again, this is like a shell game. Which one of these hangers is an aircraft? If we saw an aircraft leave a hangar, we can identify it as carrying an aircraft. What's this? I think that's an ammo bunker. Again, we are not precise enough to kill those things. Don't waste your time. We're going to win this because we got the access points. Trust me. This group of hangers looks pretty good. Keep in mind, because of our computer, 10 targets for 18 airplanes. I'd be lucky if I get three or four of them. So let's go ahead and take a shot at that anyway. Hangers. We're going to try. We're going to try. Now, a hangar itself, if you've actually clicked on one and taken a look, we saw this a minute ago, 600 damage points, no armor. So it actually doesn't take that much to kill the hangar and whatever's inside of it. So let's go ahead and grab all of my JH-7s. Keep in mind, I've already pre-calculated the ranges here, so I know that my munitions will get to the target. The reason I had these refueling aircraft is because earlier we had a little bit of trouble with that, but we fixed it. Speaking of uh, refueling aircraft, these two are reconnaissance aircraft. I'm going to add them in as escorts. You're like, wait, why would you escort somebody with somebody with a camera? You want to do battle damage assessment, and these guys do a really, really good job of it. I'm actually going to split them up into two smaller sections here, so they kind of follow it in. Okay, so how many bombers should we do at a time? So if you take a look right now, it's set to four. Four doesn't go into 18 evenly, so we can't use four. We can use six, we can use three, we can use one, we can use two. So if we increase the number of bombers per flight, what that's going to do is it's going to basically spread out the damage to that location. If we decrease it, we have the ability to reattack quicker and more easily. However, you also tend to get that kind of long string and you end up not doing as much spread out damage. So in this case, I'm going to spread out and hit as many hangers as I can. So I'm going to go with a larger group and set my mission, um, I should say my WRA, to only do a single unit attacking. So we spread our attacks out. Then the following two groups, or two flights, I should say, will have the ability to reattack anything that survives this first wave attack. This is going to get a little more complicated when we start using you know, LGBs and things like that. Okay, that's everything. So we have the four um, access points being attacked. We're going after those bombers. Again, I wish I had CBUs. This would be much simpler. And of course, we have these two guys on reattack duty. And on our hangars, we have a couple guys that are actually going to help give us some photo reconnaissance, battle damage assessment. Okay, let's see what happens. Enough chat, more kill, right? Something like that? I don't know. Ready to go. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's see what awfulness I am doing this afternoon. Okay, so this group right here, notice AP2 has gotten here first. You can't have a lot of control over that. So what they're going to do is they're going to go down to the deck, basically at this point, rush over here and try to attack that access point. So uh, we'll let them do that. Let's see, I believe this is another group of J8s. Yep. And then obviously this group's going to arrive in a minute and they're going to start doing their thing. You have fun? Uh-huh. And you have fun? Okay, pause. Let's see how we're doing so far. So one of these access points we can confirm was damaged. Another one was damaged, and we're still waiting on those two. Look at how spread out these unguided bombs are. Anyway, da, 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 da. okay, pause. Meanwhile, our reattack aircraft are sitting here ready to go because I knew this would come up. The real question is, why are they at such low altitude? I must have told them something wrong, but that's okay. So let's actually have them fly over here. I'm going to slow down time here so it's not such a blur. Yeah, I want them to be kind of medium altitude. Actually, sounds pretty safe for these guys. I'm going to go zip in. And let's see what we've achieved. I have a feeling we didn't succeed. And that is the nature of battle, of course. Oh, I forgot. We're not done yet. Hey, get back here. Sorry about that. Oh, they were here all along. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So I believe these, yeah, these must be the tuple of, yeah, those are the H6s. All right, let's get some PDA here. Uh, let's see here. Do we have any damage? We know there's light damage on it. We know we're about to spam all of their C-130s or F-111s. And I think that's the last attack group. Yes, indeed. So now we've got, unfortunately, these two aircraft with the task of um, doing our reattack here. 
we've basically failed our mission. I mean, in a second, we're about to get quite the hit once this tarmac gets spammed. Notice, by the way, that each stack of bombs was targeted independently. Be oh, my gosh, look at that. Oh, that's gone. Keep in mind, each one of those groups of bombs was attacked, uh, targeted individually. So as a result, we got that beautiful spread of damage. That was nice. All right, let's go ahead and find our group that's our re-attackers again, unless they've run out of fuel here. I'm actually going to unassign them, send them back here, drop them down to medium altitude, and I might as well just have them do this. If I was a smarter person, and again, when I tested this scenario earlier, I was actually able to succeed with this, with hitting them with just one attack, but we just didn't do well with it today. That happens. And again, that's the nature of warfare. Okay, so that's it as far as stuff that I have to drop bombs conventionally. Uh, There's a really great example of a runway attack during the Iran-Iraq war right at the beginning when basically Iran sent tons of basically F-5s to make an amazing raid, and it was actually really, really impressive. All right, let's switch sides and see what we actually achieved. So first of all, these access points are fine. That sucks. That means this aircraft, this airport, is perfectly functional. Notice we did barely any damage to the runway itself. You can't hurt a runway. And if you also come over here and look at the taxiway, you can see that it's in perfectly good shape as well. However, look at how much damage we did to their Air Force. This is the best part. Let's see here. We want to do... Oh, sorry about that. Losses and expenditures. Check it out. Went through about 200 bombs. They lost all their C-130s, half their F-18s, most of their F-111s. So that was still fairly successful. This would have been a pretty successful attack. So as you can see, we did not succeed here. It was very difficult. If I had a little bit more patience, what I would do is actually have two separate waves. Basically, one attack the access point, see what happens. Then the next one attacks the access point, see what happens. However, we also crippled most of their air force, so I'm not complaining too, too much. All right, let's go ahead and do this with some precision weapons. Things get different when you do precision guided weapons, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and order up an attack for the whole entire airport. Watch this. So target, AP. Land strike. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at some of the European assets I have at my disposal here. So I have these beautiful Mirage F1CTs. These are great because they have LGBs. We have Tornado IDSs with cluster bombs. We have some reconnaissance aircraft. We kind of saw how to do that earlier. We have F-18s, GBU-10s. These are big bombs. And of course, we have Jaguars, uh, GR-3As, and these also have also very large LGBs. These are the modern LGBs. So now that we have precision guided weapons, do we change our philosophy? No. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean out all this stuff except for the access points. Now remember, these are 1,000 hit points apiece. A GBU, I'm sorry, yeah, a GBU-24 or an LGB, any of these weapons usually have about 300 damage, if I recall correctly. Yeah, about 250, so it's going to take four successful hits per thing. So four times two would be eight, but you want to round up to 12. So let's go ahead and get ourselves uh, some aircraft that we know can do the job. That's 12 bombs, not 12 aircraft. So let's see here. What shall we do here? Ooh, 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 I've got so many good choices. Uh, let's use the Mirages. Why not? But we'll be stingy because we don't have to waste ammunition. Let's see how much these guys, I believe, carry a total of two each. Two, three, four, five, six. That's it. That's all we need. All right. Let's set this to attack as a group. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to weapons release authorization here. Uh, let me do my math real quick. That's six bomb. Hold on. I think I did my math wrong. That's 12 bombs total, and I need a total of eight bombs. No. I need four bombs each. Yep, this ain't going to work. Good thing I thought that math out real quickly. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, now I've broken the thing. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, we're going to need something that's got a little bit more carrying capacity. That's not going to work. Um, I can't use these, obviously. The F-18s. How many of these can you carry? Two. Oh, what a bummer. How about the Jaguars? Also two. Eh, we're going to have to deal. So each one of these are going to take four of those Mark 84s. So I'm going to need a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, times 2, 16. Bummer. All right, we'll go get those Mirages again. Again, I almost did my math wrong, and that would have been pretty bad. So we're going to need a total, let's see, two. That's going to be eight bombs. There we go. That's going to be 16 bombs. But keep in mind, an LGB may miss, and it may fail. So this might not be enough aircraft for this purpose. So I'm actually going to add an extra two. So that gets us 10 Mirages. All right, now we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and set these guys down to sections, which is going to be groups of two. 
And then here's the danger. If we send them as sections, what's going to happen is they're going to keep reattacking the same exact target. That is such a pain, but that is the nature of this program, unfortunately. So I'm going to do something really naughty and set it to six and then disable enforced flight size. This is going to make it much safer. Let's go ahead and do weapons release authorization. Now we're going to have to get a little complicated. Let's see what we have for land contact. Two rounds. That's actually what we want. Notice it preset it as one unit. I'm actually going to make sure this is set for everybody because I don't want them wasting these weapons. You're going to have to come in probably by hand and clean this up. If they had four GPUs, this would be a little different. But unfortunately, this is what we got. Uh, that looks good. That looks good. That's good. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now let's see what else we can wreck here. So now we have the ability to actually engage and destroy the ammo storage. By the way, you notice I'm skipping fuel because fuel doesn't matter in this build. If it did, it would be the easiest target in the entire airport to wreck. Look at this. 40 hit points and no light armor. You could do that with a cannon, but unfortunately it doesn't matter. So don't worry about that and don't target it. Okay, which brings us to our next set of targets. So let's see here. I have a Tornado IDS. That's got CPUs. Oh, I know what I'm using those for. I'm actually going to include this one as well this time. Yeah, it'd be really nice if you could just kind of, uh, let's create a new mission here. Let's call CPU'd. Let's go ahead and do a land strike. Press OK. Let's grab all my tornadoes with CBUs. I'm actually going to add these two targets also. And it looks like I picked up a hangar by accident. Beautiful. So now you want to be very careful here. And you want to make sure that they don't waste shots all in the same target. It's so frustrating when they do that. So you're going to want to come in here again and make sure it's only one unit per attack. This is really important. We have about 12 total targets and I have 12 total airplanes. So if our math is correct, that's basically one group of CBUs per target. A tornado is also a very accurate aircraft. So let's go ahead and crank this up to six. Again, I want to do that so they drop them all at the same time. If you do a piecemeal, they're just going to keep reattacking the same target. Too much micromanagement. Don't mess with it. All right. Now it's time to deal with the hangers. Hmm. How do we deal with hangers? Well, first of all, let's create a mission for it. Actually, I got a better way to do this. I'm going to click on this, create new mission. I'm going to do a hangar. That's not how you spell that, but that's all right. Land strike. Press okie doke. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some. We need a precision guided platform. Bam. Thank you, Spain. F-18s. So first things first is I'm going to get rid of that stupid one at the top. Scrolling down here, i got some parking space. We're already engaging that. The ammo bunkers are so tempting as targets, but I know I'm not going to be able to destroy them completely. So why waste your time? Oh, now I've done it. <laughs> Whoops. Whoa. Sorry about that. Why am I not wasting my ammunition on those bunkers? It's because I know I'm not going to be able to kill them. The hangers on the flip side, one GPU is going to cripple anything inside of the hangar, meaning victory as far as I'm concerned. That looks pretty good. Da, 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 da. There's about 18 of us. There's about probably about 15 of those. Go to your WRA again. Actually, I think I might be able to get away with being even more efficient than that. Does a GPU 10 do as much damage as I think it does? Let's take a look. 643 damage. Oh, that's cool. Let's see. Is that going to be enough to kill the hangar in one shot? Because if it is... I'm going to succeed. Damage. Yes. Oh, that means I can put one GBU per hangar. That's awesome. So I'm actually going to go to weapons release authorization. If I was being very stingy, I would go ahead and set this to only do a single round each. And again, that would save me half, which means I could attack twice as many hangers now. As a matter of fact, I think I got them all. Yeah, I got them all. But in this particular case, the only thing I'm going to change is just like I said before, make sure you set it to one unit. Otherwise, they're all going to attack the same stupid target. I hate it when they do that. This happens with um, uh, Tomahawks as well all the time. Just be careful with that. Okay, this is going to be fun to watch. I have a little bit of overkill here, but that's okay because each one only holds two. And that should do it. Let's see, am I missing anything important? I'm destroying everybody on the tarmac. I'm destroying all their hangers, and I'm crippling the airport at the same time. However, I have saved myself eight Mirage F1s. Hmm, what do we do with the Mirage F1s? Originally, I would say, go blow up the gas. You know, it's, it's a good feel-good target. But the important thing here is, is that even going to matter? I'm just looking around, looking around. I got a control. I guess I could put a round through the control tower. I'm sure that would annoy them a little bit. Uh, let's see. got a couple open parking spots, uh, bunkers. Okay. Intelligence suggests that there is a group of bunkers that carry more ammunition than the other. 
let's engage those. But this is also going to be a good demonstration on just how hard it is to kill a bunker. If those were revetments or something like that, it would be pretty effortless. Let's go ahead and grab my Mirage F1s. We're going to do two sections like that. I'm going to let them attack the way they normally attack because it's, it's going to take a few rounds. By the way, look at the weather. It is cloudy at 20,000 feet, which means we're going to have to dip down in order to engage. But anyway, enough talk. Destruction. Okay, let's see who got here first today. Cool, watch this. They will distribute their bombs at the same time against different targets. This is dynamite. Also for the morale effect, I just I would never want to be there when this happens. But watch this. <laughs> Keep in mind, there's six behind them that will do the same thing. The reason they turn away, by the way, is basically to give themselves a little bit more room. And two of the access points are already offline. These guys are kind of zipping around real quickly. I want to make sure that they're not attacking the same access point over and over and over again. By the way, a little warning. If you have, if you go to your um, MCON and all this other good stuff, double check loadout setting. Sometimes they'll attack with a single attack and leave with ordnance still hanging off the bottom of their aircraft. If this happens to you, you just have wasted the attack. So I'm going to let them kind of do this one more time and pause. Watch. We've destroyed these two access points, but these two access points are completely untouched. So one thing that you're probably going to notice is they're just going to keep reattacking over and over and over and over again. This thing will never completely get destroyed, and you'll run out of LGBs. We've got to actually jump in and interfere before we waste ammunition and time. A couple different ways to do that. Of course, I've got this. Uh, let me grab that unit real quickly. Uh, you guys are already out of ammunition. Nope, you have five left. One thing we could do, of course. Actually, there's already an LGB on the way. That makes me feel a little bit better. Let's wait until that one hits. Pause. Now we need to absolutely make sure we get that last one. So what we should probably do is manually order the next attack. To do that's pretty easy. I could do one of these things. I can go ahead and select these two targets. And then whoever's got bombs left, I can go ahead and decide. Keep it. That's okay, though. Let's give him uh, two there. Let's grab that other access point. Let's give him one of those. And give him one of those. And then we'll save that last one for a re-attack if we need to. See what happens here. Oh, by the way, watch these guys. That's our ammo bunker attack. I don't think it's going to do anything. Nice, nice, you hit it. I'd hate to be under this airport. Watch this. All right, these guys for the access points are coming back. Here comes some more. If you did not manually order that attack, they will end up wasting their ammo. I can't say that enough. You can always split the attack up like we did with the unguided bombs also. That works very effectively. I'm probably going to need a re-attack here. This is satisfying to watch. Everybody just sort of queues up at the airport in their own designated time, delivers their munitions with no inter interference between two airports or anything like that. Pause. I don't know if we got... Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. You're good. You do you guys. Yeah, we did it. This airport's now crippled. Notice these aircraft have really, really sensitive targeting pods, so they have the ability to actually identify what they've damaged already. So the reattack option becomes much more plausible. Here comes the next group. By the way, if you want them to attack simultaneously, you can, but I'm going to kind of save that for its own video a little later on. Speed things up a little bit here. You're probably saying, why don't those guys leave? The reason they're not leaving is because they've exhausted all their targets. They're too effective. When this happens, there's nothing stopping us from you know doing something like this. Let's uh, grab everybody. Okay, like all. All. Again, why waste the bomb? We were a little too efficient at attacking the hangars, by the way. That's why this has come up. I might as well not waste them, right? Sometimes when you do something like that, you have to kind of do one of these sort of dealies. So you can kind of line them back up for the attack. But I want to show you just how ineffective this is going to be against those ammo bunkers. <laughs> it still hasn't killed one of them. Oh, no, we got one. We got one. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, it's depressing. All right. I'm actually going to send you guys home. Good job, everybody. You guys go home. Go home. All right. Let's see how we did this time. Now, this is, again, all precision guided munitions. We got every access point. No, we didn't. 
One survived. This airport is still completely viable, completely useful, and completely able to uh, launch aircraft. Shoot. It's important to have good reconnaissance. But again, I want you to see that. However, there's another hidden piece that you probably missed. We got every single one of their aircraft except for one C-130, which means this airport, as far as anybody's concerned, is useless as far as providing for the war effort because it no longer has any aircraft at it. Okay, so hopefully that makes things a little bit more clear as far as how to attack airports. Again, you want to have some kind of reconnaissance unit, confirm. You want to make sure you have something available for reattack in the event that you don't get it the first time. And uh, one thing I will point out really, really quickly, though, is under Russian assets, they have a lot of the same kind of things. They have the RBKs, their equivalent of cluster bombs. The AS-4 Kedge is basically a really, really effective standoff missile. The key thing with the Kedge, as opposed to some of the other ones, is it's gigantic. It's also armor-piercing, so we could use it against the bunkers. Offensers, of course, you can carry these great five Fab 500s, but the great thing with the Fencer, as you're probably familiar with, is the fact that it's a little bit more accurate with those weapons. You can actually see here, it's got advanced computing sight, which means you're gonna get more bang for your buck. The, uh, of course, you know backfires. These guys have cruise missiles. Cruise missiles are very effective as well. A warning on cruise missiles, by the way, look at their reliability. You're saying 85 is pretty good. Yeah, but if you launch 20, three of them don't work. So again, if we were counting on disabling those access points, we would not have succeeded statistically with that many cruise missiles. Interesting. Obviously, reconnaissance and, of course, refueling. All right. Hopefully, that helps out a little bit as far as it. Key thing is, at the end of the day, kill the access points, find a way to do it, and then you can deal with the aircraft at the airport itself. Enjoy.